Great. Thank you for joining us. We're just letting some folks into the room and we will get our meeting started for today. All right. So thank you for joining us and welcome. My name is Amelia. I am a staff member at the New York State Chapter of NASW. Um, we're just thankful that you came and joined us for a meeting today. These are our monthly membership meetings. Uh, we started these meetings because we wanted to be able to meet directly with our members. We wanted to be able to have more transparency about what's going on um, and let you uh, have direct access to our staff, um, questions about our updates, and let us know what's important to you, what you'd like to see some updates on in the future, and um, what you think about the direction of the chapter. So I am going to give it a start off. Um, actually, I'm going to thank uh, our interns today for joining us and helping this presentation, uh, both Alice Ackerman uh, from SUNY Albany and Olivia Knox from Marist. Uh, we also have um, our chapter executive director with us, Sam Fletcher. So thank you everyone again for joining us and I'm going to kick it off now. Oops, give me a moment. Okay. It's coming, I promise. Okay. So thank you again for joining us. Um, the first thing that we wanna talk about is in place of our regular monthly meeting next month, we're going to have our very first inaugural annual meeting of membership. This is intended to be a full day meeting for our membership to give extensive updates on the chapter's accomplishments in the last year, where we are going, an opportunity to break out, speak to committee chairs, speak to the people who are actively involved in developing our legislative agenda, our policy committee, and all staff members um, about what's going on in the chapter. It is a full day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, you can jump in and out whenever you want. So our schedule is up. You've received, received the schedule previously um, in emails. You will receive it again tomorrow in your membership update. Uh, so please join us for the sections that you're interested in. We'd love to have um, you all engaged and attending. It's important that you um, your voice is heard as we uh, decide what uh, the future holds for the chapter next year. And we hear your feedback on what we've accomplished um, in the last year as well. So please save the date and uh, do consider joining us for a portion of that time um, in November. All right. We have some new committees and special interest groups that are being developed. We're very excited about. Um, one of those is a student leadership committee. Um, this committee's first meeting, which is really uh, you know, open to everyone, uh, looking to see who might be interested and find out what this committee's purpose could be. So uh, the student leadership committee first meeting is on the 20th of November at 7 p.m. All students are invited to give some feedback on what they'd like to see from NASW New York State for students. And student members are all welcome to join uh, the planning of this committee and um, to apply for appointment to this committee. So please, if you're a student or if you know a student who um, has ideas or wants to see something out of NASW, this is for that very purpose. Uh, the next committee that is uh, where we are creating is the Emerging Professionals Committee. Now, this is for the new social worker, if uh, you will, if it means, you know, you just graduated from traditional, you know, bachelor's BSW program or MSW program. If social work is your second career and you are an emerging new social worker, uh, this committee is uh, for that purpose. So our first interest meeting is open to anyone um, who considers themselves an emerging professional or emerging into a new area of social work, that interest meeting is going to take place on the 17th at 5.30. Uh, so please, anyone is welcome, members and non-members, to give us feedback on what you would like to see happen from this committee. Um, and uh, anyone who is a member of the state chapter is welcome to be uh, appointed to this committee. Um, so again, we'd love to see you there. The last group um, that has been working, we've had multiple meetings and it's been great. I uh, just want to make sure everyone knew about it, is a private practice work group. 
Uh, this emerged out of some conversation that has been happening on our private practice listserv, uh, looking for a place within the chapter for um, private practice clinicians to discuss some of the issues that they're facing right now. And it acts as a conduit to our AGR committee. So talking about some issues that we need to be thinking about in regards to advocacy, in regards to policy, as well as feeding some um, feedback to the chapter about resources that need to be provided for our private practice clinicians, different support systems that we can offer, um, different ways that we can enhance and expand our memberships for this specific group of social workers. Uh, so if you haven't attended yet or you're interested in getting involved, please get, uh, contact us. It's ran by our incredible uh, Vice President of Budget and Finance, Callie Contos, um, and shoot us an email if you'd like to get involved. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is super, super exciting. Um, which is our very first ever conference for students. This is going to take place next year on February 26th. Um, and it's actually being planned all by students and our one recent grad um, who is a staff member, Shakira. So the New York State chapter has not necessarily done the best job at engaging our students. Um, and we're trying to find new ways uh, to incorporate uh, student social workers into the chapter, into what we're doing, and um, kind of start a relationship with uh, student social workers right at the beginning of their careers. So I'm going to hand it off actually to Olivia and Alice. Um, they are the ones who are contributing to this. Um, they are our interns who are making this happen. So they're going to be the best people to hear from on this. Hi, everybody. My name is Olivia Knox. I'm a senior in my bachelor's program at Marist College. And I'm so excited for this conference. We've been really planning it from the ground up and really thinking about students' interests. Um, we actually decided on the name Survive and Thrive because during these times as a student with COVID going on, um, it's pretty hard to survive right now. And so um, our plan for this conference is to really provide a student everything they need to know from um, the what you can do with a BSW, what you can do with an MSW, um, the process of applying for graduate school, social work, resume writing, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, professionalism in the workplace, in school. And so um, as a student planning it, I really think we nail everything that right now students need to hear and be prepared for. Um, so we're planning it to be free for student members. The goal is to be um, free for all students, regardless if they're a member or not. But logistically right now, that's not an option for our, <clears throat> our conference. So we've been planning sponsorship packages. We've been planning sponsorship um, for organizations, for schools, and for even individuals who would like to sponsor this. So um, if you're interested in this, um, here's our sponsorship packages right now for schools. And so um, we are coming out with our individual sponsorship packages if anyone's interested. Um, the event will really be beneficial for students. So if anyone's interested, just let us know. Hi, everyone. Alice. No, I was muted. I didn't say anything Alice wants to share, too. Hi, everyone. I'm Alice. Uh, I am an MSW PhD combined intern over at UAlbany. Uh, so I have been helping out with, we're actually building a PhD track into the conference as well for students who are pursuing a PhD. Um, some students who are at the end of the MSW might be thinking about a PhD and this would help prepare them as well. We're really trying to reach out to other students who are actively um, surviving and thriving right now to see what resources they would need or they would like. Um, some recent graduates we've asked what would they wish we had done. Uh, so we're really trying to tailor it towards stuff that students are asking for and 
can benefit them actively um, to try and build lifelong memberships with NASW and also help the profession by building more prepared and developed social workers. Very well said, exactly. So we, we're very excited about this. This is the first ever chapter conference specifically for students. So we would love both your support in terms of getting the message out. Um, so social workers know that this is available to them, student social workers. And I've been with NASW for over five years and I can't tell you how many times we've had uh, social workers and members reach out to us and how, ask how they can help invest in, in the new generation of social work. Truly, I've, I've seen such um, warm responses and um, great mentors and leaders within NASW who are concerned and genuinely want to help contribute uh, to student social workers and to our benefits for them. So we do have an individual sponsorship. If you want to sponsor two students, um, it's at $100. And if you know of organizations that would be interested or um, have student social workers that would benefit from this, we also have these two sponsorship options options for organizations um, and we'd love for you to help us to get that word out as well. Just a quick follow-up on that yeah. for anyone who are alumni of New York State social work schools reach out to your schools and tell them to sponsor it as well because they listen to alumni quite often more than they listen to current students. All so. right and I see we have a question about who to contact if you want to sponsor. So uh, shoot us an email at our info account. Um, and I think if I can have Sam write that in, um, we'll respond to you, we'll send you um, the information, we'll send you the package information, and um, we'd love to answer any questions that you, you have. Uh, yes, the sponsorship options on the screen, um, those are open to individuals and organizations. So we have a separate School of Social Work sponsorship opportunities. These are um, options for uh, organizations and individuals. So if you're an individual who wants to um, sponsor, it would be that Generation Strong uh, for $100. And we would love for you to also send these options and sponsorship packets out to your employers or to organizations in your area that would also be interested in. So the School of Social Work sponsors, we're working with our schools of social work um, as well to, to make that happen. All right. So our next section, I'm gonna hand over to our executive director, Sam. Thank you, Amelia. Um, it's been so good. I love having the students on talking about all the amazing work they're doing with the chapter. Um, I did want to just point out one announcement. Um, so Amelia told you about our November, uh, it will be the inaugural membership meeting on uh, November 14th, which will be a full day on Saturday. You know, come for what you can, leave when you need to leave, we just want you popping in. We will be recording that for our members as well. But um, because of that membership meeting, we, we had already scheduled one of our monthly meetings like this uh, for, I believe, should, I've actually been helping a member here in the background, so I would have been more prepared. I apologize. Um, right? Yeah, we had it scheduled for November 19th at noon, our member meeting. And now we're actually going to have a chapter chat with one of our other students, Ryan Kane, who's actually with us today. I saw him log on. And um, he's gonna be talking about, um, I believe environmental justice in that chapter chat. So still join us next month, just know it's gonna be a chapter chat instead of a membership meeting because we have the really large membership meeting. Um, also, thank you for all your inter interest in supporting our students. We are so excited about this. Um, we love the fact that this is being planned by students and that they're reaching out to other students to make sure they meet the needs of students. So we're very excited about it. We're actually, um, we haven't opened registration because we're trying to get all the sponsorship in first so that when we open registration, our goal and our hope is that it will be free for all social work students. So I just wanted to plug those two things. Uh, so our, our racial justice initiatives, um, we're just gonna go over a few of them. 
our revolutionized the, uh, the social work profession is going very well. We just had our fourth town hall. Right now we're focused on schools of social work and how we can create racially just schools of social work and social work education. They, these events are so powerful. I often tell people I can't sleep the, the night after we have one of these because I just keep thinking about what the students are telling us and like, you know, how we're gonna make this change and how we create these goals to make this change. So we have actually had people from over 25 different states join us in this initiative. So this has grown quite a bit since the, the beginning and we have such a high level of energy going into this. People are, are really invested in changing our profession and in getting us to be that in that racially just place. And um, I appreciate everyone who's been a part of this. Um, this is a long-term initiative. It's you know 18 months to two years, which is often the case when we're looking to make permanent change because we're gonna do it the right way. Research base, we're gonna do it from the voices of the people that are impacted by racial injustice. So that always takes time. And um, we keep learning new stuff every town hall. So it's really good. Join us for our next one. Also on November 18th, we can spend the whole day together on November 18th. You can come to the chapter chat. And then at night at, um, what time are these at, Amelia? I think it's at six or 6.30. Six, they're, they're usually at six, yeah. Yeah, at six o'clock on November 18th, it'll be our final town hall looking at schools of social work. So please join us and listen to what the students and career social workers are saying. And then tonight, we actually have an event in our racial justice uh, initiatives. This is our self-reflection initiative. Uh, this is the one thing we don't record and we don't record it purposefully. Um, what we do with this is we divide into groups and each group is co-facilitated by a person who has white privilege, either they're white or they have white privilege and someone who identifies as black, indigenous or a person of color. So you have two facilitators and mixed groups and then we have conversations. Tonight we're focusing on allyship. These have been very powerful and really getting to talk and hear people's stories. And you know, those stories really change hearts and minds. And um, actually Alice, one of our students, uh, she partners with, with my partner from SUNY Albany, Don Knight Thomas, they actually partner and, and they co-facilitate a group together. So you'll see her if you come tonight. Um, I co-facilitate with one of our members, Carrie Tabog. Um, so I really hope you can join us. This is a great opportunity if you're like, oh, I've never really been involved in racial talks or racial initiatives. This is a great place to start. It's open to everyone. It's a very relaxed environment. Oh, uh, Suzanne, do you have a question? You can unmute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm unfortunately not able to come to this tonight, um, but I and I and I totally understand the the reason for not recording it. But I'm wondering if there's a way to for us to kind of culminate at a later time these um, kind of key points of action that can be taken um, by us from that that results from these conversations, right? So like the, the question is how do, you know, like how do you want your white peers to show up for you for like later on for those members that aren't able to attend and be a part of the discussion, is there something that we can get to be like, this is kind of what a result or, an, or a potential action that can be taken by us as members? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it makes total sense. It's a really good point. So what's interesting about these is it's, it's a lot of it is the self-reflection part, right? Um, and this is actually the initiative uh, that I started with my partner, Don Knight Thomas at SUNY Albany. And um, it's the same format we used. We'd go in, we'd have, groups, we'd have discussions. And a lot of times with this one, it is 
while we're asking this about allyship, right? The purpose of the groups is that self-reflection. So a lot of times you'll have people who've never had the conversations, although it, it varies in these groups. We get people who are activists to brand new people. Um, I would say like one of the things I always uh, say is that this gets people used to the uncomfortableness. That's the power of the group because we're sitting for an hour and a half and talking about something. And I've been doing this for years now. And a lot of times, you know, the white participants will tell me I'm so uncomfortable. And, you know, I'm telling them lean into that, lean into that discomfort because our black indigenous people of color, um, you know, fellow humans, they feel that all the time. You know, when they walk out of their house, they feel that. When they're in the store, they feel that. When they're driving in their car, they feel that. So this is, you know, it's really to train people with white privilege <laughs> and like how to interact. But the question of like, how do I show up for? I like how you're asking that. And I think that's something we can look at doing, adding to our education, because we do have an education component where we do continuing education um, and looking at maybe focusing one of those on um, allyship. Yeah. That, what do you think, Amelia? I think that's a great idea of, of like a particular CE program around it. But I also want to say that what we just talked about, um, the revolutionize the profession, that's an also a really that great way to show allyship. So this is essentially breaking down recommendations and goals within schools of social work, within NASW and within practice of how we can make this racially, those areas racially equitable. Um, those goals and recommendations and action steps are be, being determined by our BIPOC peers. Um, as allies, uh, as someone with white privilege, my job is to support that work, do the research, do the writing. Um, you're gonna be able to contribute to those work groups and be a part of the group that um, creates the research and support for those recommendations. Um, it does, we, we will talk about in all of these, which are recorded and up, um, we do talk about how, um, you know, people would like to see white social workers step in and to be an ally. Um, this is an excellent way to really do the work, um, physically do the work. Um, and I think that a lot of the, the, the question about how to be an ally does fit in here. I think the difference we're talking about is the, um, the racial justice forum in terms of getting a list of what we talk about. I think that the best place you can find that, Alice just put into our chat. So we also have a resource page within our anti-racist initiative. This page does talk about a, a specific ways that you can practice allyship. Um, you know, tonight, it's really about having that conversation and reflecting on how you have or have not been an ally um, and how you can start to have these conversations and support people on a more interpersonal level. Um, and we will host many more conversations like this, but for the it written up in the meat and potatoes, I guess, to see it, um, that would be our resource page and our revolutionize page. Um, and we'd love for everyone to be able to come to our racial justice forums. If not tonight, this is going to be continuous and we will absolutely look forward to seeing you in the future. So I hope, uh, I forgot who asked that question. I did. Yes, you did. And I, I'm just kind of coming from two different heads because my regular job is in the School of Social Work and, and we, we have these conversations. <laughs> But I, I'm thinking on my other head with my private practice and you know my fellow practitioners in my practice, how they you know like how the, the continuing ed piece would yeah. be helpful too. Absolutely, and so we'll actually get to practice within Revolutionize as well. So that might be a great opportunity to sit in and listen. Um, and then we're going to be creating goals to make rec uh, equitable practice as well. And I know private practice is something we'll hit on. So those will be good to look forward to. So thank you so much for that question. Well, and one thing to think about, too, is so actually Olivia, for one of her assignments at, at field education is she is hosting one of these one of these sessions at her school at Maris. So me and Shakira Maki actually from our chapter are gonna go in and co-facilitate um, one of these sessions. 
and Olivia worked with us and created the prompts. We use prompts. So we'll throw out a question and ask everyone to contribute. Um, we also do a lot of work before we start, just so you know, we talk like we, we have a fantastic facilitator, Shakira Kennedy, who does like breathing work and gets people centered before we go in and like teaches them how to relax themselves. She's great. Um, and then we also just kind of, we talk a little bit about language. We talk about like how to ask the questions. So like, if you are a white person and you're not used to being in these conversations saying, I have a question, I don't know if it's offensive. If it is, please tell me, tell me it's offensive. I don't want to be offensive, you know, like how to bring up those questions because we want people participating. So I'm really glad you asked. And now we have a new topic to look for with our CE series. Yes. We will get on that. So yeah, that's tonight. And I put in the link, the registration link, if anyone wants to register. And then I think you're gonna talk about, yeah, this one. All right. Yeah. So uh, the last part of our anti-racist anti initiatives that I'm going to cover, we're gonna to cover today is stories of strength and voices of change. Um, this is an initiative that comes out of, um, you know, the need to show, um, you know, how, how experiences um, impact our BIPOC social workers and peers. Um, so it is, a, we are asking for submissions of any medium, um, kind of like an open mic, if you will, but they're going to be recorded and distributed. Um, so we're, we're opening for um, song, for music, for dance, uh, for spoken word, for photography, for poetry, for art, for anything. Um, and to talk about, um, you know, within, within the scope of how, um, how you are healing uh, from, um, or how you're healing right now, how uh, doing art or doing uh, creative activities helps uh, our BIPOC social workers and peers within healing um, and to really get those stories out there because it is, um, there's many different ways that you can hear um, and learn about um, how racism and how oppression and white supremacy has impacted our peers. Um, I'm myself a musician and I find that music for me is one of the most impactful mediums. Um, so I think that this particularly speaks to me and I hope that if there's anyone who themselves um, wants to uh, express um, any topic around the idea of anti-racism and Black Lives Matter, you're welcome to make a submission. Um, and if you know any colleagues or clients or peers or anyone who you think would benefit um, from expressing themselves in this manner, we also encourage you to um, send it to them. So this will be included in your membership update tomorrow. And it's also on our website now. Um, we're super excited that this is um, being uh, uh, organized by uh, two members. One is uh, Tamara, uh, last name, ooh. I like Walker. Walker, Tamara gosh, Walker. I was gonna say white for a second. Tamara Walker, as well as a member and intern, Matthew Mackey. Uh, so we're super excited that they're doing this um, and we'd love to have um, any of your participation as well. All right, I'm next gonna shift into highlighting what's upcoming from our Veterans Mental Health Training Initiative. Uh, we have been doing panels with veterans, um, with our veterans initiative. If anyone's been able to attend, um, you already know how impactful these are, have been. Uh, essentially, we set it up with a moderator uh, who facilitates a discussion around a population or an issue within um, veterans military culture or military life. So we've spoken about the importance of peer support on these panels. Our last presentation was um, oh, we've the veterans experience in regards to 9-11. We also just had a panel of all uh, female veterans and the experience of female veterans. And now our next one is gonna take place on November 18th from 12 to two. Uh, this is a panel on the experience of uh, BIPOC and minority population within military. Uh, we have six individuals uh, representing diverse backgrounds uh, to talk about their experience within um, their military service and as a veteran through the lens of um, being a BIPOC individual and how 
uh, being BIPOC, uh, that experience um, is diverse, but also different than that of the white population. Uh, so again, that takes place November 18th. It is approved for two CE credits and it is free. Uh, so that is approved for social work, LMFT and LMHC. We love to have you come and listen. These stories are incredibly powerful and it's so important to hear of the lived experiences of individuals rather than just a, you know, a CE presentation that is also valuable. We find that these um, really make, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a different impact and it's a different understanding of these issues when you hear it from the voices of, of those who have experienced it themselves. So we wanna encourage you all to attend this. It's been a great resource thus far, a very successful part of our veterans initiative. Um, I'm also going to do a quick plug. If you don't know it yet, we have a one team listserv that is also free for all social workers um, and mental health clinicians to be a part of. Um, it's ran by our Veterans Mental Health Training Initiative uh, Committee and moderator, uh, Alyssa Gibbons. Um, and it's just a place to connect, provide resources, referrals, all type of things around uh, serving veterans and their family members as social workers. So. Um, anyone is welcome to be a part of this. Uh, if you'd like to be added to that free list, sir, let us know. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, how to provide feedback on the proposed um, program priorities and updates to the code of ethics. Now, I see that we have a group here. Let me see how many. We have 20, we have 28 people here with us. So I wanna see the comments on both of these areas increase by 28 before November 6th. Um, it's extremely important that our members provide feedback to the delegate assembly before these are adopted. Um, I'm going to quickly go through um, some of the priorities up on the screen. Uh, they are written broadly. Uh, they're a bit vague in order for chapters to interpret them, adopt them and do, um, you know, interpret them different ways within each chapter. However, we still need your feedback. Um, right now, they, there is not many comments on our program priorities or our code of ethics across the nation. Uh, we wanna see New York State members being engaged and providing this feedback. Uh, so we know that our chapter members are represented and our chapter members um, are helping to form the future of the NASW, both in the chapter as well as nationally. So please, uh, we ask that you go check out um, the, uh, the pri proposed priorities, uh, but I'm, we're gonna be honest that I found it a little bit difficult to navigate to give comment on these. So what I'm gonna do right now um, is show you how you're going to receive these um, and how you can provide comment on them. I'm gonna go uh, take a moment for everyone to read these. Again, in red, we have the proposed changes to the code of ethics um, and on white is what it currently is. So they're making changes around cultural humility and competency. Um, all right, yes. And we wanna make sure that your feedback and insight is included. So I'm just going to quickly, we're going to throw those links in the chat box shortly, but I'm also going to show you how you're going to receive this information. So tomorrow you'll be getting your membership update. Right here, we're going to include the, um, the prompt to provide comment. Now, the first one, click here to view your program priorities. This is going to be the, pro these are the program priority goals that are up. So please, the first one is clicking to actually view them. We found that it was hard for members to find them with the initial way that it was directed. So these are gonna be right there for you. Um, and then you're gonna click here to provide comment. You'll have to log in and then comment. So we can see there's only 14 comments nationwide. So that is why I need everyone on this group uh, to commit to providing comment. We need your feedback incorporated. And I believe we already have one person on this group who's already provided feedback. Thank you, Stuart. So you get a gold star for today. 
So you're gonna click here and then provide feedback in this forum. Now the next one, the proposed changes to the code of ethics. I'm gonna have you click here. We're trying to make this as easy as possible. Here are the changes. And you're gonna be able to use the second link to make those responses. I'd love to see that increase. I'd love to see everyone here uh, provide their feedback. Okay, so lastly, I am going to hand it over to our two student interns uh, to talk about some work that they've done with the chapter around voting initiatives and the election. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Olivia and Alice. Hi, everybody. So, um... I have been posting a lot about voting and social work on our social media. And um, I was just truly inspired by the national voting and social work um, voter mobilization campaign. Um, social justice is a core principle of social work, as we all know. And the national voting social work campaign really emphasizes that voting is how we can create that change to promote social justice for our clients, for our communities that we serve. So um, earlier in this, the year, I attended some webinars and chapter chats hosted by Jessica Mitchell. Jessica is the chair of the PACE committee, the political action committee. And so um, a lot of my social media posts have been inspired from her presentations and I just really learned so much from her. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Amelia, could I share my screen? Just one second, I'm sorry. I just wanted to show you some of the social media posts that I've been creating and sharing. Um, the goal really of this was to provide social workers with this information and have it easily accessed so that they could share it with their clients. Um, so I'm just pulling this up. You should be able to share my, my apologies, everyone. I'm still learning Zoom. <laughs> okay, um, is my screen shared? Yes. Okay, so um, this is our voting website that Alice and I and other interns have collaborated on. So we provided a ton of information from voting deadlines to how to register to vote, absentee ballots. Um, there was a lot of questions around absentee ballots with this election because of COVID. So we really wanted to stress that. So as you can see, you can just click on any of these tabs and have the resources right there for you. This is for absentee ballots. So we really go into detail on the website, but on our social media posts, I have been sharing um, smaller uh, tidbits that are pretty useful and easily shared. So this is just an example of one that I created on voter suppression and why it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah. This is just some of my posts. I'm gonna give a big thank you to Olivia who has helped us up our social media game. Um, mm -hmm. So we've had lots of shares, lots of saves on these. Uh, so we know that it's really helping to um, both educate, get the word out there about um, your rights around voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Olivia, can you tell them about, I always found the most interesting thing you found about staying in line. Oh yeah. Because um, right now there's not many voting um, polls in a lot of communities. So the lines are extremely long. And what people think is that when the voting place closes that they should leave too, but that's not true. And that's actually losing out on so many valuable votes, um, you actually are legally required to stay in line because you were there before it closed. So you have a right to exercise your vote before, even if it's not your fault that the place closed, 
it's busy. And so you have your right to stay in line and get your vote. Um, and a lot of people don't know that. So that's really important to stress. And all this information is so important for social workers to pass on to their clients because um, not many can be informed on their rights and it's the social worker's duty to inform their clients of this. So this was just some more general information about this election that I posted earlier on. And we've had some um, voting initiatives hosted by the National Voter Work Mobilization. And then as um, for NASW requiring the social injustice, how do we respond to it? I posted this. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and so that's what I've been posting. And my goal is just to really have easy, like noticeable graphics for everybody to share and to really spread this information. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, you know, we we're really trying to improve our political presence, um, you know, to make the social work voter block um, in New York State more prominent. Um, and we have to do this in many different ways. Um, and so this is one of the ways that we're doing it. And very thankful to Olivia for her work on that. I'm also gonna have uh, Alice talk a little bit about um, voter suppression and voting for special populations in the election. Hi everyone, Alice again. Uh, I do wanna follow up on something that Olivia said about the standing in line. Uh, it is it is a key form of voter suppression that is happening everywhere. We may think a lot of people think that we're immune in New York, but I have a friend even in the Capital District, wonderful guy, BIPOC man, 6'4", 300 pounds, looks intimidating as hell, teddy bear, wound up at the last election spending 13 hours in line to get to vote because it just keeps happening. So that is key. Uh, so one thing I want to highlight is Olivia showed you the website and on there we have two very important sections for me. Uh, voter registration uh, and protections for specific populations. We have information for people with disabilities and the American with Disabilities Act, how that impacts voting in particular, the impact of felony convictions on the right to vote in New York State in particular, military and overseas citizens, um, all of those special categories have very complicated issues there. Uh, and we have information if you have clients or agencies you work with who would benefit from those, I encourage you to give them that website or check it out yourself for the very detailed information. We also have uh, the subsection voting while trans which is actually part of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Uh, a lot of issues, uh, particularly under this administration have come up about LGBTQ rights and trans rights, in particular with voting. There are huge issues with uh, identity documents, dead naming for anyone who doesn't know what that is. That is using a trans person's name that they were assigned at birth, not the name that they go by now, not the name that they truly are. Um, so we have some key highlights and details on how that in particular uh, works out. That section uh, I found doing some research is exceptionally specific by state. So if you have clients or agencies that are working with that population, I encourage you to check out that, that section of the website and the National Center for Transgender Equality, their full voting while, while trans resources. Thank you so much, Alice and Olivia. Um, so that concludes kind of our announcements and updates today. Uh, we want to open up if you have any questions about what we've shared with you, 
um, want to provide feedback or if there's just anything in general um, that you have questions about or want to provide feedback on, uh, this is an opportunity. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so let us know if there's anything you'd like to talk about. All right, you can unmute uh, if you would like to speak. I know uh, Ekaterina said every voting location has an accessible voting machine as well, which is very important. Let's see. I just want to say, and I've said this before when I was at uh, some of the diversity work that the chapter is doing now, I have been an active member of the chapter for almost 25 years. This is the most exciting and energized I have ever experienced the chapter. And I've been in leadership and it was just not nearly as vibrant uh, and committed, I think, to creating change within and without. So I really want to thank the current leadership because I am energized and I really haven't been in this organization for a while. So, uh, so I really want to commend what's going on now. It really, to me, is wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barry. I know that you've been involved in our chapter for a very, for, for some, for quite some time in leadership. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you, you feel that I think it a lot, um, a lot can be changed and a lot can be uh, born out of great leadership. And we have an incredible new leader as our executive director who came in last year, Sam Fletcher. And we've been surrounded by some incredible board members and infused with so many members who are now involved. If you saw in a recent uh, announcement in our membership update, we have over 120 members within the last three months who have been put into leadership positions. I have, I mean, I don't know, but I think that that has to be a record for this chapter. So leadership from the top down, um, as well as leadership from our members is really changing this chapter. And I'm sure Sam, if you have something to say as well. First of all, thank you, Barry, you make me blush. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, but that, yeah, this is a membership organization. And all of you are the strength and we could not do what we do without you. So thank you for your encouragement and everything you said right back at you. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for leading this. Thank you for being involved um, in all the things we're doing because it's, it's you, you're the members, you're the power. So thank you. Thank you for, for going with the change and, and giving us that win that we need to get it done. All right, we got a ditto from Suzanne. Um, glad to see that there's a new leadership and new membership, renewing interest for the organization. So we're, we're very happy to see that as well. Um, the power of NASW really comes from the power and numbers of our social workers. So uh, we're, we're thrilled to have all the people on this call with us today. Um, if there's nothing else, if you have no more questions, um, you know, you can unmute and speak or throw one in there. Uh, if not, it seems like we've slowed down. Uh, we're just going to conclude today with a, with a thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, you will be receiving all that information again tomorrow in your member update. Makes me okay to talk. Can I, I also want to thank the students. We have seven interns uh, with us this year, and you met, you got to meet Alice and Olivia today. Ryan's also with us, uh, and you'll get to meet him more next month. But they have done phenomenal work at the chapter. They bring a lot of energy and creativity, so we're very grateful to have our interns with us. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much. We hope everyone has a great rest of your day and we will con be connecting with you soon. We hope to see all your faces at our upcoming program. So have a great rest of your day, everyone.